What's happening, everybody? We're out on a beautiful March day to do another whiskey review. Now, I can't tell you where I am, but we're going to have to do some hiking to get there. I estimate about five miles, possibly more, but we'll get there. In the meantime, just enjoy the scene. The trail that I'm doing today, folks, is a very, very long trail. Again, there's certain information that I can't divulge. However, this particular section, like I said, should be somewhere around five to six miles. I can tell you right now, it being that I've never done it before, I know it's challenging. Folks, this is what's called a switchback. If you never heard of it, I'll tell you about it someday. But now, if you're really interested, Google it. If you look at the ground, folks, you can see a lot of thatch, a lot of pine needles and leaves. That tells you, tells you one thing about this trail. It's, a, it's not overly used, which is great. Less people means less trash, means better maintained trail. But the one thing you can see about the trail is that it's well beaten, which means there's plenty enough use. But there's one thing, the thatch is a big hazard. I've been entertained the thought, unfortunately, of slipping and falling to my face. In fact, I have slid already on this stuff quite a few times. One thing about the sliding around, especially moving downhill or uphill, is that it forces your body to, your body and muscles rather, to correct, which means more work, which in effect makes you tired. We're not even a mile in yet and I'm beat up but I've done mileage plenty of times don't worry about me we will get there
There's a sign back there, people. And that sign, if you paid attention, we have four more miles to go. That's a kind of a clue to where we're going to end up. Four more miles to go. Again, if you didn't or weren't, wasn't paying attention, go ahead and rewind. All right, folks, here's a thought. You remember when I said the trails were well maintained? See the log that intersects this trail? Well, there's proof, right? These logs have been cut by some sort of a saw. And that's because there are lots of volunteers who donate their time to help take care, manage and maintain these trails. And kind people, nature lovers. And they do it so that other kind nature loving people don't have to negotiate miles of fallen trees laying across miles of trail it really does help i to take a moment to thank all of those people because without them lugging chainsaws sometimes for miles to take care of a trail it wouldn't be as nice so to all of you people out there all over this country and world helping to maintain trails like these I salute you <laughs> and I thank you keep up the good work Perhaps one day, I'll be able to join you in your ranks. In the meantime, we love you. Well, we are here. Or very close for that matter. What's happening everybody? My name is Jolly and I want to welcome you to another showing of Whiskey in Woods. Today we will be reviewing Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon. This is one of my favorites. It is a very inexpensive staple. I do want to give you a little information first before we uh, start the tasting and give you some tasting notes, nose notes. Uh, Jim Beam is distilled in Claremont, Kentucky. It's distilled by Jim Beam Sundry. Uh, Sundry is a foreign company that bought out Jim Beam some, some years ago. Uh, the master distiller is still, however, of the Beam family. His name is Fred No. Uh, Jim Beam is aged for four years. Uh, the mash build is 77% corn, 13% rye, 10% malted barley. Jim Beam is 80 proof which is 40% alcohol by volume. I do want to give you a little bit little bit of history before we do start the tasting though. I want to start with uh, Jim, Beam him, uh, Jim Beam himself, which was actually, his actual name is Jacob Beam. All right, from 1760 to 1834, he was the master distiller. Uh, the the Beam success, success story begins with the founder, Jacob, son of a German immigrant, started selling a corn whiskey recipe created by his father. 
He sold his first barrel of old Jacob Bean in 1794. All right, then you had David Bean, who was the second master distiller. He was a master distiller from 1802 to 1854. And after that, you had James B. Bean, 1864 to 1947. At the age of, of 64, after Prohibition ended, this man known as the Colonel and the legend bought the brand back to life by rebuilding the distillery in Claremont in 120 days. He unveiled Jim Beam shortly thereafter. Uh, it's been the world's number one bourbon since. Right. And then and after Colonel Beam, you had T. A Jeremiah Beam from 1899 to 1977. And following him was uh, Fred Booker No. II. 1929 to 2004. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Uh, Jim Beam's daughter, Margaret, married into the No family, and a new name was bought, brought into the Beam family tree. Her son, Booker No II, who was larger than life, became known as the innovator. Revitalizing the declining bourbon category with his legendary small batch bourbon collection. Uh, after, uh, Booker Be after Booker, no came his son Fred No who is currently since 1957 the master uh, distiller known as the global ambassador by the way all right I will edit in uh, shots of the spirits in glass by the way so that you can see and discern clarity and color but I'll tell you right now it's a light gold uh, the nose, uh, it, nose notes are said to be sweet with notes of vanilla, corn, light fruit, and alcohol. Uh, the palate uh, is said to be uh, notes of taste, toasted oak, vanilla, and cream, caramel, a little spice and pepper. All right, and the finish uh, is said to be smooth, mellow, of a medium length, corn and vanilla, toasted oak, and, uh, and resin with a bit of sweetness. So I, I did want to give you that information before I took a taste and then what I'm going to do is, is go ahead and take a shot and then let you know how I feel about it as well as how my notes of notes compare to what I'm tasting. Uh, first, there's the nose. Obviously, it is a sweet whiskey, vanilla, a hint, corn, I, I don't get it at all. Fruit, of course, fruit for sure. And the alcohol, like, I can't really catch. Uh, all right, here we go. Mmm. Oak, it is a bourbon. You're gonna get that for sure. The vanilla, vanilla and cream, they do come out in the, in the palate. Caramel, just a little bit. Uh, pepper, all the way. Spice, whatever. It is a smooth, smooth and mellow finish. That, that's for sure. And it's more of a medium uh, finish. I'm still getting it. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. I like it. In fact, I've had Jim Beam on my bar for quite some time, and I enjoy a good, good glass on ice on the rocks. 
every now and then. Well, thanks so much. I do appreciate you joining me once again for this episode of Whiskey in the Woods while we review Jim Beam. Cheers. And remember, and don't worry about the best whiskeys. Drink what you enjoy, however you like it. Peace. What's happening, everybody? I wanted to stop, take a moment once again to thank you all for the well wishes, the comments, the likes, and the subscriptions. I do so much appreciate your support. And if you haven't already, and you want to stick around to watch the channel grow and, and, and mature, please subscribe. Hit that subscription button. Also, smash that notification bell so you'll be notified each time I put out a new video. Thanks again so much. Peace.